Hi. Yeah, I got my hair up. <laughs> it's one of those days you just throw it up and then I look on camera and it's like all crooked and everything. Anyway, it's definitely a messy bun. Um, what a weekend we have ahead of us. It's been, I'm feeling a little sentimental because our daughter, uh, Justice, who is the current Miss Tennessee, is um, giving up her title and her crown this weekend. So they happen to be hosting that event in Mississippi. So we're driving there with her fiance, my how things can change in a year. Um, actually, it's been over a year. She has been the longest reigning Miss Tennessee for like 500 and something days. And because of the whole COVID situation. So uh, I guess she's the host for um, several of the events and for the prelim and the actual finals. So we get to dress up one last time and go support her and cheer for her. It, her first pageant, she had only known Chris, her current fiance, for two weeks. And it's just so exciting to see what God has done in that time period. She's um, grown, learned so much, and, and just has um, so much confidence. And as you see, when she did the, um, she took over here for me for a few days, she just has really important things to say and has um, an important voice in the days to come. So anyway, we're proud of her. We've got a big weekend plan, but so um, unrelated to that, my sister, Missy Crossan, who I'm super excited about, is going to be here um, tomorrow morning with me. So we're going to have a conversation about Holy Spirit um, with you. And um, she just, we like, I don't know, iron sharpening iron. We just love getting together and talking about all things God. And so... Uh, I will warn you, it might be a little longer than normal because, um, you know, once I have an opportunity to be with her on here, I'm going to take advantage of it. So anyway, um, yesterday was just such a sweet time with the Lord together. And I hope that you um, experienced him in a, in a, in an encounter kind of way. You know, we have to, what, what is life without that? It's just information, you know, this is really about relationship. And that's what the Holy Spirit, more than anything else, wants to facilitate is relationship between us and Jesus and us and our Father and us and, and himself, the Holy Spirit. So um, I so love just delving into scripture. I'm going to I'm not going to do a deep dive into anything that I'm going to share with you today. I just want to give you like a little taste. I want to go after this idea of um, what is at stake when we are not filled with the Holy Spirit? What's at stake when you specifically are not filled with the Holy Spirit? And I'm going to use that terminology a little bit loosely, a little bit vaguely, because as we've stated over and over again, we all have the Holy Spirit in us if we have chosen a relationship with our Father through Jesus. They come as a package deal. We also know that there, and I haven't gotten into it yet, but we know based on the book of Acts that there is a another level of infilling of the Holy Spirit. Um, but we also know that we are told Again, I'll get to that scripture eventually, but we are told in scripture to be being filled. It's just kind of the same idea as the kingdom of God. It's here and it's among us, but that it's also coming in an increased measure. So everything with God is always available in an increased measure. There's always more. There's always more of him. There's always more of Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, I'll just jump to my first example, uh, Samson. You know, we grow up with the story as a kid, if you're raised in the church, and Samson is the one in the book of Judges who, um, you know, from, I think he was dedicated to the Lord from 
in his mother's womb, if I'm remembering the story correctly. And from a young age, it says that the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he literally tore a lion apart. And another time, um, he actually killed an enemy. And then we go on and learn his story. He had a, a very up and down relationship with the spirit of God. And, um, you know, I think of, of the Holy Spirit. And if you were a part of the Toronto outpouring, Father's Blessing, whatever you call it, um, back in the early 90s, then you know when you experienced another measure of Holy Spirit, it was literally like plugging your finger in a in a light socket. Like physically, you would shake or you would laugh or you would cry. Like it was an overwhelming of, of every part of who you were. And um, so I, I think of the, the, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God as being, you know, the being just plugged into his power, his presence, his love. And, you know, depending on your maturity level, literally, um, it, it's, it's an issue of how, how do you partner with that? And I watched through the years um, when I used to lead worship and we were pastors at a church and we would pray over people and travel and lay hands on people and pray over them you would see how there, there are people who, the longer you experience um, that tangible presence of the Holy Spirit, the more you learn to like partner with it. And I, I'm not really a drinker, but I'm told by people who do drink alcohol that, you know, you, you learn to handle your liquor is the expression. And there are those that, you know, you can have a sip, a drink, whatever, and, and they are just immediately, their personality changes. Someone else could, could drink quite a bit and no one else would ever even know. So might be a poor analogy, but the spirit of the Lord is the same way. There's, there's a level of maturity that comes where we are a member in worship. When, when I would first start leading worship, I would feel so drunk in the Holy Spirit, like just couldn't hardly function, couldn't hardly think, at times couldn't hardly stand up. And that's great for me, but what about everybody else that I'm trying to lead? And so the Holy Spirit taught me over time how to stand, the expression is stand in the anointing, how to stand under that anointing of the Holy Spirit and literally take everything that I was feeling that was so overwhelming to all of my senses and put it through my voice. And back to samson he 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 was new on the scene of how to partner with holy spirit and um i don't know that it was the spirit of god that led him to tear a lion apart maybe it was a scenario where it was you know needed i don't know that the spirit of the lord came upon him in order for him to kill the enemy i just know that that was his response scripture tells us um you can go into the book of judges the the 13th chapter, the 14th chapter, the 15th, 16th. It's all in there if you want to study it for yourself. The most important part about Samson's life is that he was filled with the Spirit of God. And he made, uh, either he or his parents on his behalf, made these vows that he wasn't supposed to cut his hair and he wasn't supposed to drink and different things. And um, I think that's the right story. I know it has to do with hair. I'm not sure about the drinking. Anyway, he goes and, um, you know, he's with Delilah, not a good situation. And um, it says this key phrase in chapter 16, verse 20. He did not know that the spirit of the Lord had departed from him. And so he's thinking I'm doing all this. I'm compromising a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm not keeping the vow that, that I'm supposed to keep. And he was so used to falling back on the gifts, the talents, the strength. For him, it was a physical strength that the Spirit of the Lord would give him that he wasn't even aware until it was too late that that had lifted. And I'm not going to go into this whole story. It doesn't end there. 
But that's a key thing for us to know. Like, what is at stake for the good and for the bad? What's at stake if we don't, um, if we don't abide in Holy Spirit and host the presence of the Holy Spirit? Are there people that we were created to, to impact and change their lives who God will have to find someone else, you know, and, and will he? Um, what about our own lives? We will, will we fulfill the mission, the destiny, and the purpose that he created each one of us for to our fullest extent or even close to it if we're not um, remaining filled with the Holy Spirit and walking in the Spirit um, in a mature way? And, and then on the, on the positive side of that, um, what, what all could we accomplish? What could we accomplish if we partnered with Holy Spirit, if we stay filled and continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Um, I'm going to give you some quick examples of different ones who we know to this day about them because they partnered with the Holy Spirit and they were filled with the Spirit of God. Um, the first example are the artisans that um, Moses was building the tabernacle. And God spoke to him that there are gifted artisans who are filled with the spirit of the Lord. Um, one specifically, Bezalel, uh, Exodus 31, verse 3. I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. Next week, I'm going to talk to you about the Holy Spirit partnered with the spirit of wisdom and how they are the same. But here, that's proof of that. The spirit of God in wisdom and understanding. So um, creatives, those of you that are creatives, you know what it's like to partner with Holy Spirit when you create. It was the Holy Spirit that was hovering over the water when there was no form and the earth was void of life. And I believe it was the Holy Spirit of God that that helped create. Um, Jesus was the Word, um, and the Holy Spirit was was accomplishing what the Father would would dream of in the earth. I just think it's a beautiful partnership that they had. Exodus um, thirty five, verse thirty one. He has filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and knowledge and all manner of workmanship. It repeats it again. It's repeated several times throughout Exodus. Um, there were many gifted artisans in, in whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom that they may make. And then it lists out all the things that they were going to make for the temple and um, for the tabernacle. It was going to be, it, it was beautiful. And it took them years and years of them daily being filled with the spirit and knowing um, how to take the word of the Lord and bring it into a physical expression in the earth that would impact countless lives um, at the time and then for all of us for all of eternity this this tabernacle that was built to specific um very specific instructions on how to do that so in numbers the book of numbers is all about moses and um moses in numbers chapter 11 verse 17 God said, then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit, he's speaking to Moses, I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you. Moses had gone to God and he was saying, I can't handle being judge of all of these people. I, I, my responsibilities are too great. And so God had compassion on him and he chose, um, in verse 25, he took of the spirit that was upon Moses, and he placed the same upon the 70 elders, and when the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. So we know that the Holy Spirit causes us to prophesy, can cause us to prophesy, or to speak the word of the Lord, the heart of God, the encouragement of God. And here it was the wisdom, the ability to judge. And these 70 elders, um, what would the lives of all of those that were there, how, how did these 70 elders filled with the Spirit of God, how did they make a difference in that generation? It was huge, I'm sure it was profound. And the trickle down per family and per person, like they got to experience 
the justice of God because these people were willing to partner with the Holy Spirit. And um, another example in, you know, just Moses himself, it, he, God said that he took of the same spirit that was on Moses. So we know that Moses was also filled with the Holy Spirit. And what did Moses accomplish in his lifetime? I mean, it, it's just huge what he accomplished. He brought the whole people that were in bondage out of slavery from Egypt and led them for the 40 years. What a task, what a job in the wilderness. And then we know that Joshua, Deuteronomy 34, 9 says, Joshua was full of the spirit, capital S, of wisdom. Um, and in Numbers 27, 18, we're also told that Joshua, a man in whom is the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And what was Joshua able to accomplish? What would be at stake if Joshua had not partnered with the Holy Spirit? They were literally led into the promised land by this man filled with the spirit of wisdom. And a lesser known person in the Bible named Othniel, he was Caleb, remember Joshua and Caleb, they worked together um, going into the promised land. They were the two that had the good report versus the 10 spies who had the bad report. Um, well, Caleb had a younger brother. Caleb's younger brother was Othniel. And in Judges 3.10, the spirit of the Lord came upon Othniel and he judged Israel. Um, it's a longer story than that, but it was an important job, very important job. And what would have happened for Othniel? What would his life have been like? You know, you've got this older brother who's like really popular and works right alongside the big guy, Joshua. And he's a leader in, in their whole generation. And it's easy for a younger brother to think, well, I don't have it as an important assignment or whatever. He, because he was willing to partner with the Spirit of the Lord, he stepped into his assignment. And didn't just watch his older brother fulfill his. He fulfilled his assignment because he partnered with the, with the Lord, with the Spirit of the Lord. And he was able to fulfill his assignment to judge Israel, um, to be a judge in Israel. All right, um, Gideon is another big one. Um, this is the last one. Gideon, we know the story. Um, I've talked with you about him before. And he was the one who was frustrated. He was in hiding. Um, the enemy had just come against his generation so strong and he'd heard of things that, that God has, had done through previous generations and how he'd been so faithful to them. But here they were in this horrible predicament, just locked down by the enemy. Does that sound familiar? And he was frustrated and the, the angel of the Lord came to him and said, go in this might of yours. Well, I think his might was his frustration. His might was his ability to recognize that um, that things could be better and where is God and, and notice that, that, that the fullness of God was not being expressed in their generation. And so he cried out to the Lord in his frustration. And then it goes on to say, Judges 6 verse 34, the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew the trumpet. And there's so much significance in that. But those of you who love a good shofar, maybe you have a shofar and you feel at times prompted by Holy Spirit to blow your shofar, it's a real thing. It's not something that just us charismatics made up. Um, it is uh, a prophetic statement that was used all throughout Scripture. Um, it is used to this day in Israel. Um, and... Uh, Anyway, I'm, I don't have time to go into all of that. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon to blow a trumpet. And the rest is history. They won the battle. Um, it's really powerful. So, a couple of takeaways. Let's ask Holy Spirit to teach us how to partner with Him in a mature way. How to be so sensitive to our relationship with the Holy Spirit, that we would notice if the presence of the Holy Spirit lifts so that we would stop and take notice and discern, what did I do? Did I offend? Did I quench the Holy Spirit? Um, did I forget the last instruction? Did I, did I obey? Um, I, forget, I forgot to mention one quick guy that has a very interesting story, but his name is um, Jephthah, Jephthah, 
J-E-P-H-T-H-A-H. -H -H. From Judges 11.29, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. This is a guy that he he's so filled with the Holy Spirit that he says, I'm going to, um, he, he makes this, this rash statement. He says, I'm going to make a vow to you, God, that anything, he was so passionate in the moment, anything, the next thing that comes out of my front door, I'm going to sacrifice to you. Well, it was his daughter. His daughter comes out of the front door. And so it's one of those hard to understand stories. But my takeaway from that is obedience is better than sacrifice. Holy Spirit partners with us to accomplish something and to fulfill a destiny that we have. And, you know, the enemy, if he can't stop you from doing something, he will push you to go further than God is actually asking you to go further in your zeal or in your passion even, and with, with even good motives, we can come out of alignment with the Holy Spirit. And so it is a process of learning how to, um, to host the presence of the Lord and to, to notice these, these nuanced ways that Holy Spirit interacts with us and to not be pushed farther into like, you know, we have so much passion because we're, we can't, hold our liquor so to speak we get so much passion that we that we literally will offend others when god was wanting us to not offend someone but to impact their life in a positive way and we can be so filled with the holy spirit even you know what does the holy spirit do the holy spirit convicts us we can feel so much conviction that we try to take our conviction that we feel and put it on someone else when holy spirit is not convicting them right now so there are ways that we get into trouble with um our our passion that comes from being filled with the holy spirit and so we want to be mature sons and daughters who know how to um to to be with the holy spirit be filled with the holy spirit and to take that into a practical real expression that literally allows us to fulfill our assignments and fulfill our destiny in a mature way so um I have a song for you. I want to, um, I'm going to try over the next, um, you know, four or five times that we're together to introduce you to some lesser known worship leaders that you may have never had an opportunity to hear about. And one of my favorites um, from way back in the day, um, we used to have a lot of interaction with Morningstar and in particular some Morningstar students. And it was at the time where um, you've all heard of John Mark McMillan. He's the one that um, wrote the song that has impacted all of us. What is that song? We need to have that as one of our songs sometime. Um, uh, he Loves Us. And um, it was around the time that John Mark McMillan was there. We had him come actually stay in our home. And his wife would later become his wife. And um, another young man named Stephen Roach. And he, I don't remember if he ever stayed with us, but we were pastors at the time. They would come and help lead worship and minister to our young people and stuff. It was amazing. But Stephen Roach, and his name is spelled S-T-E-P-H-E-N. Um, he, I don't even know if he's still leading worship or not, but he has an album from back in the day called um, Closer to the Burning. You'll be able to find that, um, Closer to the Burning. The whole album is really an experience. He is an incredible, gifted um, musician. He plays, uh, what is it called? Um, I don't know what to call it. Hammered dulcimer, I think is what it's called. And um, he also sings. And just as a little, little known fact, he is uh, I assume they're still doing this, but he lives and works alongside of the Helsers, Jonathan and Melissa Helser in North Carolina. They have a ministry there. And Stephen Roach, there's one particular song called Deeper, that if you only have time to listen to one and not his whole album, Deeper is so good. And it's, um, it's really different. It's very creative. So have your heart open. But there's one line that he gets to at the end over and over and over again. And it says, we're going to reach into your heart, oh God. We're going to reach out to the streets of men. We're going to reach into your heart, oh God. We're going to reach out to the streets of men. And I think that just says what we've been talking about today. 
That's what it's about. We're reaching into that deeper place of God, into the, the chambers of his heart where Holy Spirit takes us. But we wanted to have a practical expression where we reach out to the streets of men and women, where God meets us in the streets. It's both. So um, thank you, Jesus, for your presence that is in us, with us, on us, your sweet spirit, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the living God that that is literally on us, in us, and through us. We love partnering with you. We give you this day. We invite you into every aspect of it. We love abiding in you. Thank you for sending Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you tomorrow with Missy.